extroverted feeling. Before I introduce you guys to the extroverted feeling type of person, we must first outline the features of extroverted feeling as a psychological function in general. In precisely the same way as extroverted thinking strives to rid itself of subjective influences, extroverted feeling has to undergo a process of differentiation before it is finally denuded of every subjective trimming. Extroverted feeling is intertwined to generally accepted norms, traditions and observable facts. For instance, feelings induced by actions perceived as taboo by the majority will be banished from the person's feeling repertoire. What is valued are socially acceptable endeavors and of a collective nature, like going to church, to the movies, attending a football cup, activities that elicit feelings everyone sees as just or that can be felt in a group and that others seem to feel on the regular. Here, and more or less like extroverted thinking, the extroverted feeling function works as a judgment metric in that what is felt as socially acceptable is labeled good, the rest is malevolent. The valuations resulting from the act of feeling either correspond directly with objective values or accord with traditional and generally accepted standards. The extroverted feeling function absorbs what external objects have to offer feeling-wise. It operates according to the nature of extroverted consciousness which features an outward directedness as we've seen in the previous videos. The person gets his feelings from the environment, draws from something to himself. What he feels are the limits of what the object provides to feel. Perhaps, and as far as my speculation goes, the opposite might be the introverted who feels the personal impressions he himself ascribes to the object. I assume further that by an actually joyful event, for instance, happiness induced in the extroverted, but sadness in the introverted, as he does not only, or not even, feel the limits of the happening, but might also project his worries and fantasies onto it, which will distort it and distort also the feelings that it could provide. Description of the extroverted feeling function in its disordered state. Keep in mind that concerning extroverted psyche, disorders mainly happen because the object gains the upper hand over the function, we will discuss this further, and the latter, exaggerated, garner a hysterical turn. In this case, and similar to extroverted thinking, things can go in the wrong if the subject starts to wholly lose oneself in externals. What was at first a person who could feel the emotion something or someone offers, the feeling function having been exaggerated, loosens the personality structure to a point it can be easily swallowed by the stimulus provider. The subject melts in the object. Emotions and facials he displays gain a imitative character. A smile turns an unconscious smirk. He may go as far as to resort to people please, to be agreeable in excess, totally unaware that he's feigning emotions as a means to an end. This facade can be pleasurable to the aesthet, to those of a thinking type, can go undetectable. They can do without genuine displays of feeling, often gauge others of their intellectual prowess. Over extroverted feeling may satisfy aesthetic expectations, but it does not speak to the heart. It appeals merely to the senses, or worse still, only to reason. It no longer makes that agreeable and refreshing impression which invariably accompanies genuine feeling. Instead, one suspects a pause, or that the person is acting, even though he may be quite unconscious of any egocentric motives. In addition to mimicry, this neurotic state of being overly immersed in externals causes an exaggeration. Feeling overrides all other functions. Identity is lost. The subject becomes so enmeshed in the network of individual feeling processes that to the observer it seems as though there were merely a feeling process and no longer a subject of feeling. Feeling in this state has lost all human warmth. It gives the impression of being put on, fickle, unreliable and in the worst cases hysterical. The personality loses touch with identity. A loss of control over its functions follow. From an outer view others perceive no subject in the driving seat, only scattered feeling processes alternating one after the other. The feelings emerge compulsively, hysterical excessive laughter, sudden breakdowns and a mix of both. A neurotic state. So to reiterate everything, 
First, we have a healthy, normal, extroverted feeling function that is dependent on the environment for orientation. Insofar as the subject is able to distinguish between his identity and his feelings, he is psychically stable. But when a life crisis comes about, or in the natural case, whenever the person became reliant on people or objects to maintain that stability, the extroverted feeling function then has to work in excess, craving more and more of externals. In turn, the person reaches a point in which he cannot be calm or normal unless there's something intense to feel. In which case, even the slightest stimuli induces reactions out of proportion in him. From here follows hysteria, mimicry and people-pleasing, strange vibes, gushing talk and such like extroverted tendencies which are an exaggeration of the normal attitude. The force of extroverted feeling then pulls the personality into the object, the object assimilates him, whereupon the personal quality of the feeling, which constitutes its chief charm, disappears, it becomes cold unfeeling, untrustworthy, it has ulterior motives or at least makes an impartial observer suspect them. I will talk more of this disorder state in the next one. Some concepts may still seem vague given that this video is one part of the series which is why I urge you to watch the next ones as well as the previous ones to grasp some technical terms should they be repeated. Thanks for watching.